Hello and welcome to episode 38 of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott with Rehab Fix Online Low Back Program. And today's topic is, can your discs heal? Can they regress? Can they go back to where they came from? This is a question that I receive every single day. Can my disc heal and go back? Episode 37 was all about why your sciatica is not piriformis syndrome, why your glute pain is not piriformis syndrome. That is one of the most misdiagnosed, overdiagnosed conditions that I can possibly think of, and it happens to fall into my specific specialty, which is disc herniation sciatica. So if you have been told that you have piriformis syndrome, you have a friend that has been told they have piriformis syndrome, go listen to episode 37. But today's topic is, can my disc herniation heal? And the answer is yes and no, depending on your perspective and how you look at it. So we're here to discuss some of the evidence behind that. So there's two papers I'm going to discuss today. One is from 2015, one is from 2018, and I'm going to jump right into it, right into it. This article from 2015 is a systematic review, which covers a whole bunch of literature. They went to um, 31 different studies specifically, and they were able to come up with some numbers for you on the chance of spontaneous regression of a lumbar herniated disc. So what they found in this study, that the rate of spontaneous regression, which essentially means the disc regressing back to its original place, right? So it, so let, let's establish a little bit of context first. A bulge is where the middle disc portion, the liquid, the nucleus pulposus, starts to push outwards into the annular layer, the outer protective layer, the tough fiber layer. It starts to push into it. A disc protrusion it's starting to tear a little bit through those fibers to push outwards. An extrusion is it's tearing you know, a decent way through those and it's approaching the outer rim. It's approaching the point of busting through. A sequestration is where it has broken through all of the fibers and it is leaking out into the epidural space. Those are in order of quote, and there's a reason I'm using quotes, best case scenario to worst case scenario. I'm using quotation marks though, and this podcast is all about why. So rate of spontaneous regression was found to be 96% for disc sequestration. Sequestration is, quote, the worst one. 70% regression for disc extrusion. That's the second to worst one. 41% for disc protrusion and 13% for disc bulge. Whoa. So what do those numbers tell us? I just read from the, quote, worst type of disc herniation to the least type of disc herniation, but their percentages went from the best rate of regression to the worst rate of regression, right? Sequestration, oh my gosh, it's totally broken through the disc, it's leaking out into the nerve. That is the best chances of recovery, has the best chances of spontaneous regression. The bulge, little tiny bulge in there, a bunch of people have those. Only 13%. Huh. The least chance. So let me first jump over to the 2018 article, and then we're going to summarize these and explain why that might be. Jumping over to our 2018 article, they found a little bit more information in regards to timeline. Okay, so they found that the sequestered discs, the ones that have a uh, 96% chance of recovering, right, really good chances of regressing, they found that the discs were completely resolved after nine months, and this is all with conservative therapy, by the way, uh, with um, with non-invasive procedures, with conservative care, um, you know, rehab, things that don't involve injections or surgery. So sequestered discs were completely resolved after nine months. Extruded discs were only completely resolved after 12 months. And this is, of course, on average, right? On the other hand, Disc protrusions showed little to no signs of regression after the 12 months. So what is this saying? This is saying technically on paper, the worst disc herniations recover the best. The worst disc herniations recover the best. 
So now we know discs can heal. Discs can regress back or revert back and it can heal drastically. Discs can adapt and discs can heal just like any other tissue. And it's so, so, so um, encouraging to understand that. But, but the conversation isn't done. So does the disc have to regress for you to feel better? Huh? Well, I was shown an MRI, Grant. Uh, I was shown an MRI and I see a big extrusion on there, a sequestration on there. I see a big bulge sticking out in that MRI. I got to get rid of that, obviously, right? I see that. I see that that's the problem and I got to get rid of that. Um, And if I don't, then the problem's still there, right? I'm still going to feel pain. No, no, it's not true. You know, I, I am asked all the time, can discs heal? And my answer is yes, all the time. Every single one of my clients, almost every single one, I'd probably say 98% of my clients have a disc herniation, an active disc herniation, and just look at the testimonials on my page. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I don't need to say much more than that. But the follow-up question I have is, yes, they can heal. And then they say, well, do they revert back? And my answer usually is, hmm, they don't need to. So I was like, wait, wait, wait. You say they can heal, but that they don't need to revert back? What do you mean? What, what does that mean? Here's what that means. You can achieve full reduction in pain, full return of function, and your disc herniation could still be the exact same. What? What are you talking about? Here's what I mean. There's a few different scenarios, okay? You have back pain, you get an MRI, you see a disc bulge there. First off, that could have always been there. That disc extrusion or uh, protrusion or bulge, most likely usually the bulge or protrusion because those are, remember, think about this, those are the ones with the least amount of recovery, the least amount of changes, right? So that means most people with a bulging disc, it doesn't go away. And most people above the age of 20 or 30 years old have a disc bulge on MRI. That means it's just there in most people. A bulge could be considered normal. That is a normal finding in most people. That's why they find that, oh, only 13%, it regresses. That's why it's so low because most people walking around have disc bulges and there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't cause pain. Nothing wrong with it. Okay. This is extremely important to understand. Then of course, protrusion is the second uh, one up. And that also is a low percentage in the forties in the forties. That's because a lot of people walking around just have protrusions. So there's a few scenarios that can happen with that disc. Can the body resorb it? Yes. That's one scenario. Can the body basically cut it off, let, let the immune system attack it and gobble it up. Yeah, that can happen too. Could it also stay there? Just stay where it is and become closed off and maybe kind of like calcify, turn into a little callus and it's not causing anybody no harm, but it's definitely still on an MRI, but the person doesn't feel any pain. Yeah, that's also a scenario. So it doesn't have to go back. I just, I just uh, got a new client from, um, LA, uh, just a few days ago. And that was her main concern. Hey, I was told I, I, I surgery is the only thing that can revert it back. It has to revert back. It has to revert back. No, it doesn't. It does not have to, you could have a bulge on MRI for the rest of your life and never have any back issues, never have any pain, never have any problems. So the point of this podcast, here's what we're getting from this. Okay. One, Discs can heal. They do heal all the time. And we discussed the date, the data behind that. The worse the disc herniation, the better the chance of recovery it has based on spontaneous regression. Most likely the reason for this is because the greater the disc herniation, the greater the immune response it is on that disc and the body's going to do something about it because that's not as normal to walk around with as the lower forms of disc herniation. The bulges and the protrusions are found in tons of people just walking around the streets, lifting, having a good time with no pain at all. It's not causing a problem. So the body is not attacking it. It's not a problem. So the body's not attacking it. It can be a normal finding. Most people have bulges. It's a normal finding. 
that's most likely the reason for those. And we discussed the rates at which they might completely resolve either within nine months, 12 months, or after 12 months. In that the disc does not need to revert back in order for you to have recovered. So people always ask, well, well, what does recovered mean? Does that mean the disc is back in? No, no, it doesn't matter what the disc looks like. You can still recover regardless of how the disc looks. Recovery means you have recovered. You feel good and you move good. That's what recovered is, right? Who cares? If you can squat, deadlift, lunge, run, jump, if you can do everything you want to do, but you have a bulge still, who cares? Who cares about that bulge? It's not causing a problem. Forget about it. Completely forget about it. It's like saying, oh, but I have one shoulder uneven. Who cares? Every, most people do. Who, everybody does. Who cares? You're moving great. You're strong. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> there's, nothing to, there's nothing to worry about. So I really hope that this podcast shed some light on how your discs can heal because everybody feels as though once they're given the disc herniation diagnosis that it's a it's a dooming sentence and it's just simply not true everybody i work with has a disc herniation or sciatica or just low back pain in general and has usually been told something along those lines yeah it's a disc herniation the only way to fix it is surgery it has to regress back in the only way that can happen is by pushing it back in it doesn't have to go back in it does not have to revert, but the chances of it spontaneously regressing are very, very high. The ones that don't are typically ones that are not to be concerned about. And a good rehab plan and good conservative therapy is all you need to achieve that most of the time. Nothing to worry about, nothing to be concerned about. Don't let your doctors use scare tactics. Don't let your surgeon tell you the only way out is surgery. I have had the pleasure of canceling hundreds of surgeries. I've had an absolute pleasure doing so. So do not be afraid. Your body is strong. Your body can heal. Your discs can adapt and we can do it quite easily. Of course, when you're motivated with the right plan. So if you are struggling with a disc herniation, you've been told otherwise, submit an application on my website or in the link in the show notes so that you and I can have an opportunity to meet one-on-one and go over everything and put the right plan together for you and get results during the assessment so that you can see exactly what we're going to do, and how we're going to address it. And if you have a friend, perhaps, that is struggling with similar issues, send this podcast to them. Share with a friend. Leave a five-star rating and review if you feel as though it deserved it. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe so that we can grow this podcast. Share it with more people, more people who deserve results, who are struggling to find someone who cares, who knows how to address these things, so that they can get back to 100% quality of life, which is what this is all about. As always, move more, move in nature, and move in the sun. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day.